The objective of this lesson is to organize and describe data on a histogram. In previous lessons, we learned to create and analyze line plots. When we have a large number of data to graph, a histogram is a better option. Rather than plotting each piece of data, spans of data can be grouped together, then plotted. Histograms are built on a number line. Number lines include all possibilities, so numbers with and without data points are also represented. In a histogram, the rectangles used to represent data are called bins. The bins are aligned against each other without spaces between. This is to include all possible data points. Bar graphs have spaces between the bars since the categories shown don't represent all possible categories. For example, a bar graph can represent the different types of animals found in a shelter. A histogram might represent the number of animals in a shelter from week to week. Intervals are the sets of data included within each bin. Similar to bar graphs, histograms have scales to easily identify the value of each bin. The scale is located on the vertical axis. Notice the intervals have ranges of 5. 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, etc. This histogram has nine bins. Notice that the bins are aligned against each other. The spaces without bins show gaps in the data. The scale can be found on the vertical axis. On this histogram, the scale is counting by fives. We can figure out how many data points were used to create this histogram by adding up the numbers represented by each bin. Sometimes histogram intervals are labeled as shown in this histogram. This histogram has intervals labeled at the beginning and end of each bin. In this example, the data spans from the number on the number line where the bar starts through the last possible data point without including the number where it ends. The bin ranges on this histogram would be 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, etc. Data can be described in histograms just as it can in dot plots. We can look at the overall shape of the data and identify the graph as either symmetrical, skewed left, or skewed right. The first example is skewed right because the data is clustered on the left side and pulled right by the outlying data. The second example is skewed left because the data is clustered on the right side and pulled left by the outlying data. The third example is a symmetrical graph because the shape is similar to a bell with data distributed fairly evenly on both sides. Let's look at a histogram and describe the shape of the data. What does this histogram represent? It represents the length of the brown trout in centimeters. What is the shape of the graph? It looks pretty symmetrical. We can conclude that we would be able to keep most of the fish that we caught because they are over 31 centimeters. The objective for this lesson was to organize and describe data on a histogram. We met this objective by examining histograms, described how they are organized and the overall shape shown by the graph, and reasoned about the data presented in the histogram.